50 years ago, a journey began which would take us inside the very essence of life. By unlocking the genetic code, deconstructing a DNA molecule to reveal its elegant double helix structure, two young scientists, an American and an Englishman, would help us solve the puzzle that is life. We now know that our individuality boils down to a four-part genetic code, four basic components, each of these letters stands for one of them, strung together in a double helix, a genetic ladder three billion rungs long. And while today DNA is part of our everyday alphabet, 50 years ago this was a mystery that preoccupied the scientific world and England was ripe for the challenge. Science was the big romance of that time. Uh, England came out of World War II with Sci scientists helped win that war. Historian and author of the book A Beautiful Mind, Sylvia Nasser. There was a tremendous feeling that science was going to solve society's problems. More people knew Einstein than knew the Queen of England. Still, very little was known about DNA. To be sure, scientists knew it controlled heredity. But the secret of its structure remained an unsolvable puzzle. Enter James Watson, a zoologist. He arrived at Cambridge eager to take on the mystery of DNA. Watson was a British person's nightmare of the brash American. He was 23. He had just gotten his PhD from Chicago. He'd been a radio whiz kid. He respected no one's opinion, he, but he wanted to set the world on fire. James Watson, now 74, couldn't have said it better himself. So if you're going to do science, why not? discover something important. But while Watson was ambitious, he lacked experience, which is where the brilliant physicist Francis Crick comes into the picture. Crick was the mature half of this amazing partnership, about 12 years older. This was an intellectual partnership where one and one became 10. Crick theorized, Watson built models. Together, they all but burned through idea after idea. You're obsessed, and uh, you know it's like being obsessed with a girl or something. You know she's there, and uh, you can't get her out of your mind. But Watson and Crick had competition. At King's College in London, scientists Morris Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin had devoted years to painstaking DNA research. And across the ocean, still another science superstar, Linus Pauling, was showing an interest in DNA as well. Watson remembers his boss's call to action. Once Pauling was in there, he said, get to it. You know, he didn't want Pauling to win. The main thing was that uh, the Americans must not win. The story took an ironic twist when Watson received a critical clue from the competition over at King's College. One day, Morris Wilkins showed him an X-ray of a DNA molecule taken by Rosalind Franklin. She had been making better and better X-ray photos. When Wilkins showed Watson her last batch of photos, Watson saw where he had to go. Rosalind Franklin gave Watson his Eureka moment. Indeed, one month later, Eureka. On February 28, 1953, Watson and Crick walked into the Eagle Pub just off the Cambridge campus and announced that they'd discovered the secret to life. One month later, their theory about the double helix structure of DNA appeared in the prestigious British science journal, Nature. Still, what would become the scientific coup of the century was little more than a really good guess. It took five years before our basic idea that the strands separated and uh, uh, that the structure was correct was proven. In the 50 years since, the stuff of life has become a part of life, complete with a mascot. The announcement of Dolly's birth in 1997 that really introduced people to this whole era of possible genetic modification and new biotechnologies. An exhibit inspired by our post-genome era is now on display at New York's International Center for Photography, curator Carol Squires. Without DNA technology, most people would not have been identified from the World Trade Center site. Thanks to DNA, this man, who'd been convicted of murder and spent five years in prison, was found innocent and freed. 
Genetic advances are changing the way we eat. And they someday add years to our lives. But we digress. James Watson and Francis Crick, for their extremely educated guess, would go on to get, along with competitor Morris Wilkins, the Nobel Prize. Crick now lives in San Diego, where well into his 80s, he's doing research on the human brain. Watson took the lead on the Human Genome Project, which has accelerated genetic research a thousandfold, to the point where today, even human cloning is anything but the stuff of science fiction. A concept James Watson himself isn't entirely comfortable with. You can just imagine 200 Meg Ryans in New York City. <laughs> you know, it'd be a mess. One thing is certain. 50 years after the double helix was discovered, one of the great stories of science is just beginning.